Well, we're fine now, folks. The internet's back on. We don't know what happened. But anyways, shout out to the Wolves um, and Cody Britton. Played a great game in Mersey, episode 34. Um, it was good seeing all the boys. Um, they didn't win, so I didn't say hi, or else I would have came in the room to say hi to everybody. But um, <laughs> anyways, so then Canisius, four years, you did well, eh? You put up some points. You're a D-man scoring some points. And then, uh, yeah, you get uh, you get some pro opportunities. What are the ideas out of school here? Do you have an agent? So my last – I did. I got an agent, I think it was uh... – I don't know if it was after my junior year. Um, I played like we had a good power play. We weren't deep, but like our the first line was just nasty. Um, and then I got to play on like Corey Conacher. He would just basically dangle everyone. He was on Canisius then, College. <laughs> he was the guy that played for like the Lightning. Yeah, he was at your wedding, right? Yeah, he was my roommate. Um, and then, like, other guys, Finis Carcella, um, uh, Joshua Heinger, just, like, great, like, passers and just good players. And they would just, like, I would just shoot the puck. Like, I didn't have to they do Take a clap time. bombs, like, off Lordo's <laughs> head? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, so I had nothing after my last game – at Canisius, we lost to RIT, I think, in the playoffs in Rochester. So then, obviously, all the seniors and stuff, we just party, right? Give her. Give her. We give her. And then on the third day of giving her, I get a call from Rochester Americans to go play there. I'm like... Like that night. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> like yeah, I know. I know what yeah. you need. <laughs> No, it wasn't that night. It was like for the next Friday. No, yeah, that's what I mean, though. Like, you this was like a Wednesday. Days, yeah. And this was like the Wednesday, and it was for the Friday. I'm like, shit, like, I just burnt my, like, my arm with a curling iron, like, on purpose. Like, I'm not ready <laughs> to play a game on Friday. <laughs> I totally get it, man. I did the exact same thing after college, and like, so, I, I, I was a good boy for a couple of days because I thought I was going right away, and then nothing was happening. I'm like, well, I'm gonna have some fun with my buddies then if nothing's happening and then all of a sudden it did, yeah. like, mine was like two weeks later man i hadn't even played hockey in two weeks <laughs> and funny enough it was my junior coach eric veilleur who so the coach in rochester at the time was ben grew and he called eric saying like hey i need players like i have nothing and then eric veilleur said this guy just graduated like just finished his season call him up he'll do anything you want so anyways I get up there and Ben Grew says, listen, I know you were, you know, power play and goal scorer or whatever. And at Canisius, I just want you here to be like, a, just a a, five, a, six and just chip it out, chip it in. No, he said he wants me to be a rat and just like, Oh, just like mean. So I'm like, really? Okay. And I was still <laughs> kind of big at the time. Like not, not big, like name big, like, you know, two twenty strong ish um and then i'm like all right i could be mean i can cross check and slash guys and hit guys you know so i'm like all right let's do it and at first shift i smoked this guy for the marley's <laughs> i probably would have got like a 20 game suspy now <laughs> like it was just like was straight shul shoulder to the head <laughs> and then uh I, I lost my stick. I go to pick up my stick. I look up. I just see the Marley's like symbol in front of me. I it's look the up. Biggest it, guy. Oh, it's Andre DeVoe. And he just beats the wheels off me. <laughs> and, and this coach told you to be a rat. Like in pro, if you decide to be a rat, and as soon as you do a couple things, you're going to get beat up. Oh, yeah. So I knew I was, I, I didn't know exactly how it worked. Cause like, college you don't really fight you know not in college not in hawksbury like i said well hawksbury is fighting a lot different people than it is fighting yeah. those people yeah. <laughs> these are like like trojan warriors you're fighting <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah although no, they actually were in the ahl they were like they yeah. will say i couldn't have all been natural <laughs> yeah 
but like so these were beasts and then uh i think a couple games later my, I, th- I don't my, one of the d men on our team gets cross-checked in front of our bench against syracuse and uh i go push the guy morasty so <laughs> he dropped morasty <laughs> well so on I have a fight card against Morasty, but it wasn't really a fight. Like it was close to our bench, but I ended up getting five minutes for fighting Morasty, even though it wasn't. Hey, that's really, cool, though. Hey, yeah, take it, it. It wasn't really a fight. Yeah, no, that, it was like, thank I, God, it, everyone on our bench like kind of grabbed. Yeah, <laughs> Don't it's so guy. scary, man. Like I remember. It was in the East Coast. I did a couple things, and there was one time I did something bad. And like as soon as I did it, I like I so I gave the guy a little like cross check in the back of the pants, like near the yeah. end wall. And he went in like feet first, and it was bad. As soon as I did, I was like, "Oh man, I shouldn't have done that." But then as yeah. soon as I do it, I turn around. It wasn't like the guys on the ice. It was the guy from the bench, like the biggest, scariest. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh no!" And I was like, "Well, what do I do?" Like I like. So then I just like got and got ready. <laughs> I jumped over the board. We had, well, then we had a guy at our team had to be third man in and got like a ten game suspension. <laughs> <laughs> Tough times. Yeah, but you need those boys willing to take the ten gamer. <laughs> oh yeah, to save, like to I would have died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then after you played seven games and some playoff games there, eh? you even got in the playoffs with Rochester. Yeah. I don't know how that happened, but it did. <laughs> it did. Um, so then what'd you sign? So you were on a PTO or an ATO? ATO. Then, yeah. 60, whatever they're called. And then, 60, so then what happens in the off season? We got to keep going here. You've played in like 30 countries. I know, but we can do two episodes too. That's true. You want to, you don't want to shut down halfway through your career, do you? We can always talk again. We could. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So um, where what are we talking about? Okay, so I don't know where we're playoffs or no. Yeah, did you yeah, played five so, games in the AHL yes. playoffs? That's pretty cool. Yeah. I was one of the reasons we lost, probably though, which kind of sucked, but really um, Wow, I I got like you know a hip pointer. Yeah. Have you had that before? Yeah. So I got a hip pointer. I think it was game four. And then uh, I was talking to my agent. I'm like, man, I can't skate. And I tried going in the morning, trying to skate. Man, I couldn't pass the puck. I couldn't do anything. And I played that night just because like I needed to play to get a contract kind of thing in my head, right? Me too. I did the same thing. I played concussed in the AHL because I needed to play. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Navigating Lieutenant being... light logger. So you played with the hip pointer. So you couldn't skate like Carl can skate. I can, I couldn't pass the puck. Couldn't shoot. Um, but I just, like I said, like, you know what, I'm just going to battle through. I need to play. Yep. That's how we were. That's how, that's how that. our age group was born and raised. And it came from the guys above us. And it, that is, I remember seeing it in the game near the end is like guys would just be like, like, I'm, I'm not going to play tonight because I like, I wouldn't be playing right. And yeah. Does that still happen? You're still playing. I'm still playing. Um, you still play through it. I, I don't know. Nowadays it's like, if I feel an injury, I'm not playing. Like I'll go yeah. up to the coach. If say, I could, if I could redo it, there were some times where if, when I looked back on it, it was really dumb. But at the same time, it happened. And, um, yeah. But playoffs were, they were fun. I don't know how they put me on the roster, but they did. That's when I and, got sent back to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was fun. And then the off season, uh, I had, this is a really long story. Anyways, I ended up some, signing with florida which was rochester's farm team nhl um, team what? nhl team yeah rochester was it was the farm, farm team yeah farm you're team, flying with yeah. the panthers what do you sign an ahl one way so i i ended up signing a two-way nhl ahl yeah oh baby um 
but every before I signed the contract, everyone in Florida got fired. So everyone who's been like in the program, like GM coach, everyone got that canned. You're saying you signed the contract and then they got canned? No. Who signed got, you then? They all got canned. And then my agent was friends enough with the new GM and owner. That got like, you in. That got me in, but they didn't know me. So then I show up to camp and uh, we do, funny enough, we did like the... Uh, physical testing before like the or not physical or like to see if you're healthy or not right like by a doctor yeah. right before you do the fitness tests and like to make sure you're no, cleared so, healthy so i did the fitness test before finished like i think like third or second overall and then do the physical and don't or don't pass they send me for an mri i have a torn labrum they said, oh, this happened before you were in Rochester. I was like, yeah, it happened when I was at Canisius, but they said I was good to go. It was just a big shit show, man. Like, So then they tried to get rid of you? They tried to get rid of me. So then my agent says, well, wait a second. You sign an NHL contract, so you're going to go see other doctors. Yeah. So I go I go see my Miami Dolphins doctor. He says looks at the MRI. You're good to go. You can get surgery later. Your arm's strong enough. So they're like, okay, we need a third opinion. So like the NHLPA flies me out to Pensacola to see, uh, what's his name? Dr. Andrews who did like Tiger Woods knee. <laughs> like I was like coming from Canisius. I'm just like in awe, like, Oh God. <coughs> like meanwhile, you're in a full battle with an, the team that was supposed to want you <laughs> and you're just trying to keep your contract to get paid. Yeah. Um, what a so mess. Anyway, so this doctor says, yeah, I'm good to play. So then it goes to like arbitration or something like that. I don't know. Okay. I don't really know what happened. I end up, I end up getting put on a one way, uh, HL deal. So you, you and, did lose the, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. But so you're on an AHL one way, but then that first year you play basically the whole year in Cincy. And once you go yeah. through that with the organization, you ain't making the AHL team, eh? <laughs> no. So I got to Rochester <laughs> after all this the debacle. kerfuffle. <laughs> yeah. And they had like two practices in, I get sent to Cincy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it is what it is. I, Cincinnati was a good city. A lot of fun there maybe too much fun um and then yeah after that was kind of yeah i ended up getting surgery i think the next summer this is what after cincinnati yeah after cincy i got uh surgery the next summer and then went to tryout in wheeling and then hotham came down and he told the coach i don't like Carl Hudson, so it, they, they cut me. No, you, got cut, you got cut from the Wheeling Nailers? I did. In training camp. Because of Hoth? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they had, like, so Hoth, I think, was on it. They had, like, five guys on a deal and one guy that was, like, a lifer in Wheeling. So, like, I really didn't stand a chance. It's um, crazy when, like, those – yeah, like when people talk about the coast, man, it's way better yeah. than people think. And like those rosters are basically set. I remember going to, uh, I guess it would be Dayton. And when I got sent down, like there was a guy that had played in Europe for a couple of years and came back to the coast that I remember when I showed up, like they they got rid of him, right? And like that's real world in the coast, right? Yeah, exactly. And then – uh I got to take a pee break. I'll keep it going from there. Oh Sounds boy. Good. Hold on. You, 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 what are you on here? You want to take it with you? Take it to the bathroom. What are you on? Okay. I take it to I the bathroom. Be with me. Computer. Then you can keep talking to me. Okay. <laughs> Next question. We got to keep moving, Carl. We're out <laughs> of, uh, I think we say, so you get cut from wheeling and you end up with the rapid city rush in the central hockey league. Where's rapid city. 
So Rapid City, South Dakota. This is our, Wait, I would say, second, we're, all right? well, you can talk while you pee. <laughs> <laughs> Do that. Dog. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you actually can't talk while you're being. <laughs> no. <laughs> the area. The <laughs> it's great to see you again, Carl. <laughs> it's been too long. Uh, gosh, okay. darn it. I'm good. Okay. Go back to talk shed. again. So, Rapid City Rush, you played 35 games. Way to go. But then you decide to head for Coughbor, and how does that deal happen? I don't care about Rapid City. At all, you played 35 games, just looking for an opportunity to get out of North America, I imagine, because that's what I'd be doing if I was you, right? Yeah. Um, so I went to Rapid. So, I ended, <laughs> so well, we got to go. <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay. okay. You good? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Don't laugh. Don't laugh at the mic, Wally. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay, how'd you get to Coughbor and who did it? Uh, so I ended up going to Rapid City from Wheeling because my roommate from college went to Rapid City and he's like, Oh, just come here, play with me. That would be so awesome to play with you. So I get out there three days later, he gets the job as a cop in Buffalo. <laughs> so I'm like, Well, okay. So I'm and kind of like to be realistic though, Carl. You were signing an NHL deal out of school, out of Canisius, which is rare. Um, then the whole labrum thing happens, and like it's out of your control when they don't want you and they didn't pick you. But um, then within a couple of years, like you got cut from the wheeling nailers and like you're <laughs> heading to the central league. Like you must have been like, What the hell just Dude. happened? Right? Because I was kind of the same thing. I played my one year with Dayton and then I like wasn't getting yeah. much, and I'm like, what the hell happened? So it was a total like roller coaster, right? Like you're just up and down. Roller and coaster of and... emotions. Exactly. And skill level. <laughs> with of the you people know. you play with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like um, are you, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So anyways, I ended up getting a call from someone that knows my parents about an opening in Coffer and Does that know I'm your like, parents? Yeah, it's that's some weird. German agent or something. Anyways, calls me up, says you want to come. I'm like, I'm in. Let's go. Mid season. So mid season. You just fo your phone call. Your phone rings and it's like, let's roll. Middle of the night. I think next day, drive to Buffalo from Rapid, which is you know a couple of kilometers away. And, I don't know uh, where Rapid City is. South Dakota. <laughs> oh, hardly know where that is. <laughs> I don't have the geography brain on right now. Go, um, I know I have an idea, though, folks. I'm yeah, not that so silly. I think I Stupid. stopped in and saw Allie in Buffalo on the way. And then I dropped my car off in Orangeville at her parents' house and flew out and then went to Coffee I, very similar to my story. I was heading to the coast, took a turn, had breakfast with Lisa and the parents, said, I'll see you in two weeks, honey, and got on the plane and left the next day after the call. Yeah, it happens yeah. quick when they decide to call you. Either shit yeah. or get off the pot, right? And then I get to golf beer, and I remember. <laughs> and you saw the rank. What a beauty yeah. rank, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so I show up, and the coach says, this is the rank. I'm like, wait, it's open. And it looks, it's like a, it's like a dungeon. <laughs> yeah. But it's open to the outside. Like if oh. it's snow, if it snows out, like it snows into the rink. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I can deal. You can deal. Well, you went with deal. no hot water in Cardiff for a month. <laughs> <laughs> you can deal with the cough board rig. So I went to cough and I didn't have a computer. I don't know if I had an 
I I might have had an iPhone one at the time. Um, I never had an iPhone in Germany. Stuck with the Nokia. Anyways, I didn't have yeah. Um, I didn't get a phone plan. I had to go to like a internet cafe to Skype with Ali and my parents. I'm like, all right. And then they're like, okay, we're going to bring you to your, your apartment. Like three days after I've been staying in this really nice hotel. Um, it had this really like big bed. Like I'm talking like maybe 20 inches wide. <laughs> 20 in 20 inches yeah it's a joke it was this <laughs> is like a, a hostel okay. i was in a hostel <clears throat> shared bathroom for three they, days. they flew in the new big import and put it in there eh? <laughs> yeah. and then they're like okay we'll get you a car so here's your car the thing like you know like zero to 60 yeah and maybe Three minutes if it's downhill. <laughs> My first car in Derby was an old <laughs> station wagon they got for me for the dog to be in the back. <laughs> I had a station wagon BMW that was so old it didn't have like CDs. I had a cassette tape player. <laughs> but you had a Beamer though. That was the, yeah, I did have a Beamer. There yeah. you go. That is the only time I've yeah. ever had one, and I the only time to... I ever will. <laughs> Yeah, my car was my first car was a red Chevy Spark. Oh baby, yeah, uh, so, me... yeah. Was it standard too? That you were better, you were better at it now, eh? Yeah, well, you need standard there because the motor on that thing, like, you need you need to rev it up to like six thousand RPM just to get it over twenty. <laughs> um, um, so you, when you're in cough pouring, okay, we can't dilly daddly here really um but you only go there for 11 games that that year and you get 11 points in 11 games um and you did well in the playoffs so your little tryout there in europe went well because basically the all the guys that are like us that go over there that's your your show right like if you got I your month or two to prove yourself and if it doesn't go well there you're pretty well cooked exactly it's make it or break it and i was lucky enough to play like the coach gave me the opportunity first of all and then the players did too you know what i mean so titties was on that team marku tatanen <laughs> <laughs> no i think he came the year after oh he came for your full year sorry but his nickname was titties right <laughs> I think you gave him that nickname. Okay, maybe it was just me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of tatted and titties, right? No? Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember his actual tits. <clears throat> Moving on. He might um, add, man. He was old. He was like 38 when he played in Cardiff with us. Was he that old? I don't know. Nice maybe. guy. Oh. Really liked him. He's a beauty. He is. Yeah, no, he should come on the pod. We haven't had a... He was Finnish, right? Yeah, I played. He has like 600 games in La Liga or something. Yeah, he should come on the pod. I should track him down. He was a great guy. Okay, you re signed for another year then in Cough Boron, eh? So you, you, you had gone there for like a try or not a tryout, but like a contract for the rest of the season. And basically, yeah. you played well enough to give you another deal, right? Yeah, they did. And uh, went back and Obviously, all the imports changed because they all did well, went elsewhere. Um, and, yeah, the team the next year, we just weren't very good. Like, uh, I think I think we finished last. Um, but then for some reason, there was no relegation that year, so we got lucky enough to... I'm pretty sure I'm playing against you at this point in our lives. We're playing mm -hmm. against each other. I think, yeah. I don't know if I played you my first year there. I think that might have been the knee injury, but or I just didn't play you. But definitely we're playing against each other because I remember Titties from uh, from Germany, and I remember Brady Leisenring. He had a really good year, and then so, he went to Landsuit or whatever, right? Yeah, so Brady was my last year there. He was only there when I went for those 11 games. 
Yeah, he was a good player, eh? He was, yeah. Him and Levi Nelson, they were really good. Um. Anyway, so what? what give me anything you, that seems memorable from your cough board. Another, I guess. Though, I guess it'd be Oma and Opa, probably. Yeah, Oma and Opa. I mean, that's something you brought out. with you the rest of your life, right? That like, yeah. If you and, don't go there, you never meet them. And we keep going back. Like we'll, like every, anytime we do a trip anywhere in Europe, we normally like base it off going there. Same with Morzine, right? You get, oh yeah, we haven't got into your Morzine time, but is that next? That is next. So let's do that. So you <laughs> okay. you took me to Morzine, France, and thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Yeah, what a spot in the world, eh? That's uh, honestly, I told Ali, I'm like, man, if like, if we could be close to family and live in a place like this, you imagine. <sighs> I mean, it's just those so locals cute. we met that like live there year round. I think it's so friendly too, and like just Pepe, happy. Pepe, and like the guy I held his Pepe. pole on the way down the hill, right? Oh, it's Pepe, Jocelyn Besson. Right, what? Jocelyn Besson, him and his brother Numa. That's Pepe. Yeah, Jocelyn is Pepe. Or Pepe. And, he, and he plays for Morzine, right? Does he still play he, there? I think Justin still plays for Morzine. and Numa, his brother, plays in Chamonix in the Magnus, in the top league. Oh, okay. So they, that's not the top. Chamonix and Morzine were the same league, weren't or team, weren't they, for a bit? <laughs> so I might, first, I'm might. i asking too many questions. Sorry. It's, a, it's okay. So the first year I went there, Morzine and Chamonix were different teams in the okay. top league. Right. Uh, I left Morzine for Chamonix and then I went back to Chamonix. Morzine joined, so they got some money. Is that what it's like now? So now they're we, now we they're not for, together. No, it was just the one year merge. Oh, um, and now the brothers don't even play together. Well, it's, say hi to them for me if you talk to them because yeah, that, well, that was a trip i'll never forget the rest of my life what a oh time. that was you remember when we were uh <laughs> I don't we know were trying <laughs> i remember one time you were trying to start a fire like on us like in it's the snow hill like in the middle like it was later and you like because you live in the wilderness you're trying to start a fire to like cook a no. pizza and i'm like <laughs> how does this guy know how to start a fire in the middle of a, like the snow <laughs> that's I, I was trying to tell a Pepe story when we were all trying to get into this party and they're like, no, you can't get in there. And Pepe comes around and says, let's go around the back. He's like, oh, it's nature. You can <laughs> what do you say something like that. And that's when we just... hopped the feds to get in, right? Yeah. And that's and then, what, that's the same talk we had about when I <laughs> installed the meat and it was like, yeah, we got some food, right? <laughs> like some of you guys went into the the restaurant right and got like a full buffet of food. well there was a there was a buffet at the party yeah yeah <laughs> i just got some deli meat and put it in my pocket <laughs> yeah for later right that's what i was yeah feeding pigsy and whatnot yeah <laughs> <laughs> no that was one of the funnest trips i've ever been on though like uh, you gotta you gotta feed the pig right you do no it was uh like uh yeah you were around me that a lot that year but we we're not there yet so um play i want to know about what it's like playing actual hockey there because i only went there for a vacation how do you play hockey there how do you do that uh so morzine uh well, that's where we to... were right morzine yeah morzine um so i lived i don't know if you remember where the rink was but I live right beside the rink and there's a chairlift right there. I don't even understand how there's a rink there. I don't remember seeing it. I, it doesn't even make yeah, sense. We, there's a hockey team there. Like it's just a ski hill. Like it's the best ski place ever. And how do you play hockey there? I don't get it. So basically I go to practice in the morning, go home. Um, Allie would have lunch ready for me. We would put our ski equipment on and then we'd go skiing. How burnt are your legs out? Like, how many days off you got to take to be ready for a game? 
back in Morzine, we played 26 games a year. 26. That's it. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's all you had to play. So if you have a bad game, that would suck. Oh, we lost eight games in a row. <laughs> so two months. Fucking you didn't win a game and you're just skiing. <laughs> For two months, we had, so I don't know how, but then around Christmas time, we like turned it around and started winning. And then we ended up finishing in like the pre playoffs. And then we won pre playoffs and made the main playoffs. So it was like huge big for Morgan. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is pretty cool. But I was still skiing every day in playoffs too. <laughs> every day? I guess it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? I just remember how hard it was last time I tried it, like how sore my legs were for like days after, but I guess you get used to it, right? Well, the other thing is like, okay, I say skiing, but like if you go on a ski trip, you're going to ski from like whatever, nine to five. You just go do a couple of runs and that's I that. go do a, a couple of runs and then sit and have, you know, like a sparkling water or something. To right. rehydrate after skiing after and... your yeah yeah if there was a snake in the jar not right. <laughs> um shout out to those people on the on the mountain though that uh let us have that uh dinner that night eh? that uh yeah that you set all that up thank you so much for doing that carl that was a life that was That's... the one of the memories I'll never get back, and you basically organized that. So thanks for doing that, buddy. Yeah, you're welcome. That place is called uh, L'Alpage du Cro. L'Alpage Cro. L'Alpage du Cro. Can you say that in English? So L'Alpage is basically like a, a grazing area for animals, I think. Again, you're no making sure. Yeah, it's cool. No, it, it, if if people hear this, this is in fact true. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia. Is. Yeah, it's fine. And then Ducro means like where it's like that region. That's what it's called. All right. right. Like that little corner, I the think. Crow. Okay. Yeah, the crow. Well, what a spot in the world. I tell you, folks, if you can ever get to Morsi in France, you should really go. And the people were so friendly. Um, the place you had to stay, my red sauce round ride down the mountain, all of it. The people that did that for us up on that mountain that made that so meal. And what did, time. did you know Ali used to work at that chalet? The one we went to? Yeah. She worked. That was her job was to work there. She would like clean it and serve breakfast, I think. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, when the wives can get jobs when they come over, it's awesome yeah. for them, right? Like, yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Um, great yeah. people up there. Um, so the hockey, you guys weren't that good, though. Eh? How could Morrison? you? Be? Yeah, wow, yeah, exactly. We did, they had no money. And fun fact for the pod that was the team when my year in Cardiff when I did good, and then I was deciding whether or not to come back to Cardiff or go elsewhere. That was the other team that sent me an offer. I might have been a skier, but I decided to stay. Your knee would have struggled with the ski. Yes. Yeah, it didn't last long without the skiing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, moving on, though, is um, great fondue game there in Morzine. Great fondue game, right? We did it once or twice, I think. Yeah, it felt like a bowling bowl moving on <laughs> um that's when we uh go to cardiff together then for two years right after that year yeah so lordo signs you out of morzine yeah how does that go down you knew him before didn't you so we were together in a hotel in rochester mm. so we would have breakfast together and stuff and then i played against him when I was in Cochran, he was in Garmish. Yeah, that's when I'm in Helbron. And he said, like, you know how he is all about blocking shots? And he, <laughs> he said, I remember you used to always get shots past me, and I don't know how. I want you on my team. 
<laughs> uh makes sense though like i remember yeah. the guys that could do that to me like i always wanted them to pass it down the wall or just not shoot it and hit the net right that's all you're yeah. looking for as a winger when you're going out there do not yeah. hit the net on me because then i look like a punk in front of the yeah. whole team don't hit the net and you're yeah. doing your best to block that shot right and if you can get that around a guy the guys that can walk the line and get it around you it drives you nuts as a winger yeah I could see that happening. So he asked me to come to. Yeah, I think he asked me the year before the year I went to Morzine. Come to car, but that's the year it was kind of a shit show, right? And that's when he wasn't the coach yet. He's just trying yeah. to help recruit buddies. Yeah, like you do in the hockey world. Yeah, and then he texted me and he said, "Like, give me two weeks. You know, I can have something." And then, obviously, I asked Allie, "What do you think?" And he said, "All right, let's go." Yeah. And then you head to Cardiff and why don't let's, we are going to have to keep, I think we got to keep her somewhat quick here. Cause we, you still got a lot more to go, but um, your Cardiff experiences then for two years. And what about winning the challenge cup and about, you know, Hendo hot, the whole deal playing for Lordo, the whole <laughs> group of guys. I God. think we should keep this quick, but yeah. Talk about all that. <laughs> you know what? Why don't, why don't we keep Cardiff for another episode? There you go. That's fine. Everybody's yeah. heard about that place anyways, right? Yeah. There you go. Skipping it. Smell you later. It's like How? you never even had to uh, steal the Wi-Fi from Hendo and Hoth's apartment and uh -huh. sit at their parking lot because <laughs> you didn't have Wi-Fi yet. So you'd sit there parking lot in your car <laughs> to get Wi-Fi. I thought we said we were skipping Cardiff. Sorry, that was 2014, folks. Wi-Fi is much better now. Okay, <laughs> um, you go back to the Morzine. and that's when you switch to the other team then? The, or was that when they're combined and they have more money? Yeah, sorry, I think the kids are just going nuts right now. Oh, really? Do they want to come say hi or no? This Logan? Oh, Logan might. Let me go check. Well, hold on. We'd have to pause what? and everything then. Just take it with you. Say, Logan, you want to come say hi? Just take it with you, man. Don't do not pa do not do it. Can you talk and walk? You couldn't pee and walk <laughs> <laughs> or talk. <laughs> the thing is, you know why? What? Because I need all my attention. Aim. <laughs> you weren't <laughs> paying attention. <laughs> Oh, geez. Okay. Go, why don't, let's go see what Logan's doing. Go get him. Let's go see what he's doing. I have, okay. I've, I don't think I've met him. Have I? I've only seen pictures on Instagram. That's not enough for me. And while we're talking about it, then you go back to Morzine for a year. Why'd you leave Cardiff? Um, he wants to say hi to Logan on the pod. Logan, you want to say hi? What are you eating? Are you here, buddy? Where is he? Hey, man. Hey, buddy. How are you? I just wanted to say hi. I have never met you. Your dad's one of my favorites. What are you eating? <laughs> what is that? See, he's learning to live in the bush. <laughs> buddy you gotta you gotta chew it you gotta chew it you're like your old man late at night <laughs> how's poland man you're liking it you like the food obviously <laughs> is it funny <laughs> thanks logan that was great oh gosh what was that he was eating bagel so no, peanut butter and jam sandwich oh he liked it carl that was like us <laughs> no. eating nachos late night in, in celestia <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh jeepers creep. you know it's the the state we live in now is called celestia which is really close to celestia where what? we live in so where i i'm in in poland yeah the state or province is called Silesia. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know anything about Poland, like at all, really, um, other than pierogies and that. But that's yeah, cool. I, I didn't know much either. Well, how far are you from uh, Weissfoss or Whitewater? 
Hazy sunset. It's it's far enough away. Um, oh, big's Poland. I don't even. I, I let's not Poland. talk geography. I'm sorry. I gotta right. look more on the map before asking yeah. all these questions, eh? So, so Poland's just as big as Germany is, almost. I think. Just less it's, people, or what? Maybe I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> how, many, how big's the city you're in? Uh, is it like big? Yeah, it's like three hundred thousand, maybe. So it's a big city. It's an awesome city. Did you know Poland's where me and Ali got engaged? Actually, I didn't know that. That's a fun fact for the pod. Where <laughs> in Poland, and why were you there? So we came here on a trip, um, and then I had planned it. So I knew. So Poland or Ali's family's from Poland. So her grandma, great grandmother, were all bo- born here. Serious? Yeah. Oh, well, that's got to be cool for her that's... that you're living there now. No. Yeah, it is pretty cool. So they uh, they came over to Canada. I think I think it was like bef- or during the Second World War, like to Toronto. It was just wild. Because so Ali's great grandmother ended up living through both wars. But anyways, uh, so we planned, I knew Ali always wanted to go see where like her family was from. Um, So I had planned out, you know, an engagement. Um, So we went to Krakow, rented a taxi, which was like a three Is this not when you're in Cardiff? Yeah, it is. I remember the story now that you're saying it. Yeah, so I got, I think I got, is it hot to pay for the ring? Yeah, man. (laughs) Because we have shared bank accounts. (laughs) So he wouldn't, so she wouldn't know. (laughs) Yeah, and then Hendo came with me to pick it out. Yes, 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 yes. in, In Bath. Yep. Um, And she was there, uh, right? Weren't you guys on a day trip and she was around or something or no? Did you? No, she just... was. No, me and Hendo went on her own. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm. It's all coming back to me now. Yeah. Yeah. Like huh. the song, eh? Well, it's just weird because like when I'm tied up with my kids and I think I was in school that year and like you're so busy and then you're like telling me all the stuff going on in your life and like you care and you're like that's so awesome it's so great but like like everybody's so into their own thing that like what actually stays in your brain is weird right yeah exactly (laughs) um but now that you're talking about this i remember all of it yeah yeah. and that was uh well played by you to think of all that you're a real romantic carl yeah so i ended up proposing to Allie um in front of where her great grandmother gave birth to her grandmother that's anyways it's where they live there used to be a house there there's no house now but did you figure all that out oh you want to come say hi again hey there you are how are you big guy you You want to talk some more we can always do another episode if you want to take over what do you think can you hear you got to talk though you got to talk back to me or else we we don't know what you're saying or thinking Huh? Logan, you have to say something. Do you know any Can you Polish? Can, do you know anything other than English? <laughs> you should be a weirdo. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, what's going on right now? Uh, yeah, yeah, he could hear me from King Carden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So uh, yeah. I just noticed when he got off you there, he's still in diapers, eh? So you're still getting shit on. Uh, he, we only put him in diapers at night. Yeah. Before bed. Um, yeah. So he doesn't yeah. pee the bed. I know about but the, that. Yeah, but he yeah. still pees through the diaper. Well, that's good. Yeah. Big yeah. days. Yeah. It all changes. <laughs> once, once you stop buying them, you stop buying them forever. You know? Exactly. Um, Milton Keynes lightning for the UK fans of the pod. 
what was that all about? Where so you were in Morzine for a year and then you end up with the Milton Keynes Lightning. And we never really talked about why you left Cardiff, went back to Morzine. I could see it. You wanted to get back there after our ski trip, and it was so lovely, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to get back to the mountains. Um I was, Cardiff was hard to leave though, like to be honest. But I think like Ali was there through the summer and like the weather and stuff there could just get to you. I, I mean, for me anyway, like the rain and the, yeah, I don't know. I, I yeah, I, um, and the mountain, just the, I wanted to go back to the mountains. So oh, we yeah, and you guys to, are both skiers and like, you guys love it. You, I, you were yeah. at, you were in your element when we went on that ski trip and I loved seeing it, even though I couldn't ski, I would have loved to. Yeah, exactly. Um, Milton Keynes, where, what's that? Where is that? <laughs> so Milton Keynes. Oh man, I don't know how to put it. Wasn't it's, a good year. No, it wasn't a great year. Well, they didn't last um, long, right? They were a new team in the league and they lost like a year or two and they were gone, right? Yeah. Again, I don't want to chirp or talk bad on anyone. So I'll right. just put it at uh tough times yes. and they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> We had a great group of guys, though. Like, I still talk to guys from that team. Um, and, yeah, we we're half hour from London, which was nice. That's good. Um, the city itself <laughs> is kind of dull. <laughs> yeah. Put it that way. But uh, what was no, the rink had... like? I don't. The rink was okay. The fans were good. Um I mean, I didn't hate Milton Keynes. We had a good time. Like we had like, we had Thanksgiving dinner with the whole team for the Canadian Thanksgiving, U.S. Thanksgiving. So it was like, it was good. It's just like, we didn't, uh, we didn't, we had a small bench. So like we had a good team, but we just got you get game. Yeah. You because get of injuries and stuff. And then it's like, yeah, you're not deep enough. You don't have yeah. enough money. Yeah. That just brought back a memory when you just said that. I remember it might – I don't know who all planned what and who did what, but we would have Thanksgiving dinners in Cardiff at uh, that place down in the bay, the one on the corner. Well, uh, we, so, so we had the one on the bay, in the bay, and then we had the one at the Italian restaurant closer to downtown. Yes. And they were both great. Yeah, but like those are the things you remember is that's what is brings it? teams together, right? You're La the same as me. You're all about bringing the team together. And La like, Lupa, La Lupa. La Lupa, yes. That, that was, they were called? a sponsor, wasn't it? Yeah, that they would make her meals after games and stuff. I'm pretty sure that's the place we have. Yeah. I think there's a picture on my phone of like the whole team and hockey equipment on a, a table, right? <laughs> yeah. I think that, yeah, that's the start of the second season right before my knee goes. And yeah. Then, then exactly. I'm just a mess and you're my neighbor and uh, you get to watch <laughs> the whole show. Yeah. Um, anyways, moving on. Um, three years in Krimichow after the Milton Keynes Lightning. So who's your, you got an agent through all this that's getting you all these deals? Or are you doing it yourself or what are you doing? Uh, so I was doing it all myself until um the year i think it was the year after melton Keynes, i reached out to my coach from coffee like 10 years prior and he said let me get you in touch with my agent and within two weeks he got me a deal in crimmage nice it was and uh i've been with the same agent freddie pulls ever since and he's been great what what's his name Freddie Pulls. Is he German then? <laughs> He's Austrian. Austrian. So he knows yeah. a bunch of the leagues around there. He knows the coaches. He knows what's yeah, going on. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he's been good. Um, and yeah, we stuck around in Krimi just because felt like home. Well, you had two kids there, right? And like exactly. Yeah, and I could see you guys fitting in and around Krimi. Like you guys are not. Just, this sounds, but like you guys need 
less than I do. Like you guys don't need much. You guys can live off the land. I don't need much, but you guys need less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, it's, it's hard, like, cause Cardiff obviously treated us like gold, like anything you wanted, Todd, Lordo, they get yeah. it for you. And then obviously I went to France and then back to Milton Keynes where maybe it's wasn't not the same. It's not like Cardiff where they like, but that's, that was know. the only place I played like that. Beatingheim was like that too for a bit, but then they weren't for a bit and then they were back. Yeah. And yeah like it, it's what and the then, money they have, they have. Right. And then I went to Crimichow and it was like, it wasn't about the money, but just the way they treated and took care of us. And like, with like hospitals and like, it was unbelievable. So there's um, some good people around the team. It, yeah. Like even, I think before we got there, um, the captain's wife like messaged Allie about like doctor's meetings, like knowing she was pregnant and stuff. And like, that That's was great. her first year. Yeah. So it was. Who's the captain there? Uh, so Andre, she told okay was the captain i remember shit's um, old what well, yeah <laughs> <laughs> right is yeah. he not older i would have played against shit's old yeah oh yeah you would have he's been there like 10 years there's yeah. a bunch of guys in like the guys in kermit Chow stick around because i think they I, they, they like got a good their, group like, and they like they like their group, culture yeah. and like you know, yeah. like if, if they make something happen, it's a big deal, right? If you're in Krimichow and you can have a good year, it's a big deal. Man, they started like 6 no. This year? <laughs> yeah. They really? lost both. They lost both this weekend, but they're like, <laughs> yeah, they're second. I saw place while you were there, you played with a guy named Matthew LeMay. The research team was hot. He had 68 points in a season. And the next guy in your team had 35 points and he went back to Krimichow the next year. Dude, this guy is unbelievable. So why would did he go back? Because you have a year it, like that in Krimi, it's time to head I out know. and get all four walls on the arena. Dude, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you look, but like my first year in Krimi, like I was doing super good. And they locked me down in like October for a two-year deal. So it's like, how do you say no to a two-year deal? You should have, yeah. No, I know how it happens. And they they put the pressure on. Like you wouldn't believe. Like they'll they'll you won't even get ice time the rest of the year. You won't play. Like it it is. It's not that they say that, but it's like if you don't take that deal and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go through the rest of the this year and see what I can do. Like, um they get really angry with you, right? So, so anyways, he ended up, he signed, a, he signed for this year early on. And uh, then got 60. Yeah. He, yeah. So he's good. The guy's nasty, man. Is he can snap. Well, I don't out. know you there, big guy, but uh, the shed likes to bring the hockey world together. And, uh, if you got paid someday because Carl's telling good things about you, is he a good teammate too? Good guy? Oh, he's a great guy, man. There um, you go. Agents, his, teams that his, are listening. His wife Pay would man. come babysit and stuff. And I think, yeah, um, he's a great player, a uh, good teammate, good, like, hard worker. It's just, just a good dude, right? Yeah, and he's back there. I just, I just noticed but that. Like, like I, you see a guy I, with sixty-eight points at Krimichow, you're like, okay, so where'd they go from there? Because like, guys use Krimichow to be their springboard to get paid, right? Exactly. And then I saw him back there, and I was like, ugh. And you did the same thing, Carl. You had, <laughs> I had it written down here. It's first year, forty-three points. You sign the two-year deal. They pressure you. Fifteen points, nineteen points. Coaching change, uh, I bet. That and injuries, yeah. Um, yeah, just like you know, and it's who you play with, who the power play is, like all of it, right? And how good the team is. It's uh, a mix of things, and uh, I mean, it is what it is, basically. And you just got to grind through it, and you just keep working, right? I I know there's good years, there's bad years, there's 
Uh, but you've had a hot start this year. But before we leave the Paraton, Ice Paraton Krimichows, is you also played with Dominic Walsh, who was my former teammate, who uh, no I always... No way. Yeah. I, I always, didn't know you played with Walshy. Yeah, I always enjoyed his company. He was a good dude. Yeah, and Hel- oh. for the Hellbronner Falcons. So Walshy's uh, one of me, like him and his wife and his daughter, we hung out all the time. Like He's a good dude. Oh, he's an unbelievable guy. Good player too. Like he could skate like the wind. The guy could move out yeah. there. And uh, oh, I love, he's always got a smile on his face and yeah. Good guy. Just, he's a good yeah. guy. He's a he's a teammate. I remember he didn't play much in Hellbron. He was a young buck, but like I remembered him, and like I, as soon as I saw his name, I was like, that guy is a, he's a dandy. Yeah. yeah. You know what, Wally? Though, like throughout the years of all these different teams, I haven't met many bad teammates, which like says a lot about the hockey. You know what I mean? Like, just you're like, right though. But the the thing is, is like it's weird because I think the hockey world weeds them out right if if you if you're not a good teammate and you're not a good dude it does not take long to figure that out and then it's like well who's gonna sign you you have to be really 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 fucking good to get a contract then like other than hendo and hoth like everyone's been pretty good dudes i would agree (laughs) Um, I only, there was a, there was one guy in beating hive that, uh, well, he was the worst I've ever seen. Um, to be honest though, I've seen some bad ones in the real world, but the, yeah, the hockey world, um, like, um, they weed them out that, that the good yeah. ones are what's left. And like the guys that like, look at Patrick Marlowe or Joe Thornton, the guys yeah, exactly. that, are the, that are the best hockey players and are the best people last the longest. And if, yeah. if you're a good hockey person or sorry, a good hockey player, you'll last as long as you can. But if you're a good guy, you'll last as long as you can. But if you can combine the both of them, then you're really doing her. Exactly. Yeah. Just for the record, the Hoff and Hendo comment was a joke. Okay. Yeah, hopefully they understand that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, they're both former potters. I'm sure they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I was talking for the listeners, so they don't think they were jerks. Um, but, how cold were the practices in Krimichau? Uh They weren't as bad as Kofbrun. Really? Kofbrun was worse because Kofbrun, I would have thought Krimichau was colder because Kofbrun's like in Bavaria. Exactly. So the mountains. You get the snow and the colder weather compared to East Germany. What are you getting there? Sure, fucking cold in my water bottle. Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a January game, and we go to Krimichau, and like you yeah. couldn't take a slap shot because your stick was frozen so stiff that like it wouldn't flex. Yeah, and then you come back. to the bench, the water bottles were frozen. Carl, how yeah. am I supposed to play hockey like that? So. We would get warm water put into our water bottles so they won't freeze. Um, but Cochran was colder. I think I remember the outside, the outdoor rink there. I don't know. At least the winter I was there. I won't lie to you, though. I, was, I don't mind either rink. I thought they had a ton of character, and I actually enjoyed playing hockey there. But the problem is, is I wouldn't play well there because they were tough to play in because they were different, right? That's just because they're soft. I'm soft. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to fight for you again then to show you what's up. <laughs> um, so the other thing we didn't touch on though that I think is quite impressive of you, Carl, is uh, you've been the strength coach for multiple teams. Um, you're still dabbling into the uh, the workout thing because what's hilarious to me is there's a, a Episode two, Jeff Lavecchio started this app, um, Train Heroic, and he's training all these guys all over the world. And you literally had done that for the Cardiff Devils, but you kept it in-house and gave everybody this free, all these free workouts while I'm in the middle of a gag ball. And um, <laughs> you were sitting on a nest egg. You just didn't release her, eh? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Um... So I remember Lordo approaching me and saying, like, hey, like, 
you wanted because like I had the phys ed background and stuff and he said you want to do this program and I said yeah sure and then uh Allie my wife is really good with computer and excel and all this stuff and she's like well let's put it on a blog um, you guys are a good team by the way so you know fun well, fact fun fact for the pod <laughs> um so she helped me and she would come to the gym and film me do these videos and then the first couple of weeks like she had to do most of the work um because i had no idea how to work this blog and stuff right but you knew um, how to do the exercise you know do all that and you knew everything about yeah. exercising so i learned about it in like in school obviously and stuff and i enjoy it too i like i enjoy working out like i know like hoth and joy's working out too like loves it yeah <laughs> so does hendo so do i yeah. so like <laughs> I, so i know like they, they used to text me in the summer saying like oh i love your program like <laughs> <laughs> yeah hockey's changed a bit eh? um but honestly uh no you did do like i saw the program and i saw the workouts the team was doing and it was it was the newest cutting edge stuff i had seen and i was like i was really impressed with you carl and you were my neighbor and you were doing that on top of playing and then you You know what made, made me really happy is when like richie a couple years later asked me for the link to my workout well, and like richie's is. one of the most in shape guys in the world and i said like yeah here it is like take it well and he Which linked is, stuff you were doing and like you were, yeah. you were you were doing good stuff man i saw it i never really got to do it because i was in the middle of the gag ball but um like so I, yeah. yeah i actually did some of the workouts last year in krimichau as well like the the coach ended up asking me to write workouts and i did that and you know, I enjoy it. And I think being a, a player at the same time as writing workouts has its positives because you know how you're feeling, right? And like you know I'm, what the team's feeling and you know how many games like, you've played. Yeah. Like yeah. if I'm sore and tired, I'm not going to make the guys like, you know, lift squat. 300 pounds. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, and then I can see like with the, yeah, just the soreness. Like if you have like lots of reps, low weight, you get sore. If you have more weight, less reps, you might not get sore. Like you just kind of work around that. And yeah. Um, oh, you used to make my workouts for me when basically my career was over, and I'd be like, "Well, I don't even know what to do. Like I got one <laughs> leg," and uh, you would give me stuff to do at the gym, like for fun and. Yeah, It'd be tough to start that business in the forest, but uh, <laughs> um, um, I think you have everything you need to start that business, and I think you had it, um, I guess, in 2015. Um, I think you were, you had something that could have been something, just so you know, but uh, only know. part of Devils knew about it. Again, remember, no regrets. No regrets. Keep on giving her exactly <laughs> um well how's the team doing so far are you guys good uh yeah yeah you guys are top end poland so that's fun right winning is fun it's better than krimichow then for this year sorry i can't say that because you're an active player you might want to go back someday let's say winning's more fun than losing it is but Krim- uh, krimichow is winning right now too so I mean, I'm super pumped for them. They are and, right uh, now. But like, like right now, we're our team is stacked here. Yeah. Like we lost three games out of fourteen, and we shouldn't have lost those those three games. So it's it, like, it's, it's fun playing on those teams, man. I mean, you're just a powerhouse, and you just run a muck, and it's just living. It, yeah, it, it's it's been fun. So where are you on the power play? Are you playing the flank, taking one tees, or are you up top, wrist and no, hand, taking one tees? I'm up top right now. Yeah, that's where I'd put you. God, I'd rather be on the flank, man. 
because you just want to take one tease. But I think if I you could use your feet and walk the line and take wristers too, and just get it by the guy and get it on net, and you so don't I have you, you don't have to shoot it that hard, Carl. You just have to shoot it normal speed and just get it to the net. Yeah, but I don't like normal speed. You know that. I know you like full speed. <laughs> <laughs> shoot as hard as they can, right for Lordo's head. Oh, there's something else I want to talk about. Oh, last thing before we shut her down, okay? Okay. It's been a long one. Yeah. We saw gotta... a picture of you guys at the airport on your way to Poland, and it brought back a lot of memories. Um, <clears throat> how much longer you got, and uh, and um, how, many, how many? Yeah, and how many bags did it take to get to Poland um... with, with two kids? So this is my last year. Is it? Yeah. For sure? <sighs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, I, I, mean yeah. I you know what's hard, Carl? Okay. You know what's hard? It, Do you want to know what's really hard though? Is what? like when someone would offer you a contract that would like pay for your family's life for another year. I know it'll be really um, hard to turn that down to do something else. But at the same time, healthy. like if you're healthy, we have two kids and it's time to get on. My wife wants to be home with the fan. Like just, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She's given, she's given me 10 years over here. It's time to give her yep. at least I'll give her 10 years in Canada and then we can go somewhere else. <laughs> maybe maybe in 10 years after that i can still play hockey and come back but we'll see well the way you can skate you probably can so yeah no you can uh, play forever man you're you're one of the yeah man you... honestly my body feels uh it feels like i can still i don't feel like i'm slowing down you don't look so, like it you look skinnier than Cardiff. Yeah, I am skinnier for sure. How much do you weigh now? I have no idea. I was gonna say I looked at the scale on the way out here and I was like, not a chance. <laughs> not even looking. No. All right, buddy. Okay. Well, that was awesome. We'll do again <laughs> another episode some other day, right? Yeah, for sure. Dude. Sounds good. Good luck Thanks the rest please. of this season. And um I'm the biggest Katowicz Polish fan ever now. I've uh, never been a Polish fan before, but um, good Katowice. luck this year, man. Well, if this is your last year or if it's not, whatever happens, I think a lot of it has to do with how you play. <laughs> and it's funny because <laughs> even at that age, like if someone offers you a deal for another year, you're like, well, it's... you kind of got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's it's you know what carl if you want to play another year i think it's up to you how you play so if you if you guys are going to run a muck in poland go run a muck eh well it's not up to me anymore either <laughs> <laughs> no you're right though and it's it's about the kids and it's it's about everything else and like yeah i'm glad we shut it down when we did so we could start that next phase and uh that exactly. next phase has to happen and it has to start so you can start working your way up there too, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The longer you put it off, the <sighs> yep. And this right, has buddy. been another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Huddy and Wally. <laughs> <laughs>